Welcome to the scurrychurchofchrist.org. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed uh, for lack of knowledge. Please don't let this happen to you. Feel free to contact us at scurrychurchofchrist.org uh, where you can visit us and any Bible question that you may have, we will do our best to answer. We are so glad you decided to visit us. Morning. Turn up, if you would, to Leviticus chapter 2. We're going to get right at it. Leviticus chapter 2. We know their purpose for the old covenant. It was given to the Jews, of course, but Romans 15, 4, we learn from it. Mm -hmm. He was eight five. It was a copy of shadow. So, as we get into Leviticus chapter two, and I'm going to start a mini series on the grain offering, and so we're not going to go in detail about everything. And as I deal with this sacrifice, uh, we will have a better understanding. So this morning, I'm going to deal with uh, verse 13 of chapter 2. And I'm not going to say too much about the grain offering, because I want you to, uh, to get this point about what we're talking about this morning, the covenant of salt. The covenant of salt. Notice in verse 13, as he deals with the grain offering and because God is introducing this offering to Israel. It was not a meat offering, it was a grain offering. And, and there were uh, several parts of the grain offering. And it was an offering that uh, where the people had to work, they had to prepare this offering before they brought it to the priest. And the priests also were able to benefit from the grain offering, and the priest and the high priest. But notice this part of the grain offering. It says, every grain offering of yours, in verse 13, moreover, you shall season with salt. And so he says, so that the salt of the covenant of your God shall not be lacking from your grain offering. With Then he says, with all your offerings, you shall offer salt. But no, notice he calls this salt, the salt of the covenant. And, and, but it's very interesting when he says it. He said, with all your offerings, you shall offer salt. Now, I want you, if you like, to turn to Ezekiel chapter 43 and verse 22. And I, I want to get to the new covenant. So I'm just going to hit a few highlights and then we'll move on. And so he's dealing with the covenant of salt. And he calls this the covenant of salt. And he says, with all your offerings, I you must offer salt. But remember now, he calls it the covenant of salt. And so it's going to symbolize this covenant and salt preserves. And so, and notice in chapter 43 of Ezekiel, verse 22. On the second day, you shall offer a male goat without blemish for a sin offering. Watch. And they shall cleanse the altar as they cleanse it with the bowl. When you have finished cleansing it, you shall present a young bull without blemish and a ram without blemish for from the flock. You shall present them before the Lord and the priest shall throw salt on them. Notice that the sacrifices as the covenant of salt. He said the priests shall throw salt on them and they shall offer them up as a burnt offering to the Lord. Of course. And so notice that on these sacrifices, he says the priest shall Throw salt on them. Notice Leviticus chapter 2 and verse 13, he calls it the covenant of salt. He said, for seven days you shall prepare daily a goat for a sin offering, also a young bull and a ram for from the flock without blemish shall be prepared. For seven days they shall make atonement for the altar uh, and purify it, so they shall consecrate it. 
when they have completed the days, it shall be that on the eighth day onward, the priest shall offer your burnt offerings and on the altar, uh, your peace offerings. And I will accept you, declares the Lord. But notice that I want you to see these different offerings, these sacrifices. But he said that you must uh, put salt on them. See, verse 24, you, you shall present them before the Lord and the priest shall throw salt on them. And very interesting as I look at this. And, and so what it was, uh, just to quickly deal with this and salt preserved, and it was used to symbolize a covenant that the covenant is permanent and is not to be broken. That's in Numbers 18 and verse 16. You can also look at 2 Chronicles chapter 8 and verse 5. And so this is a everlasting, you notice in the Bible, you'll see in on scriptures, in the scriptures, it's an everlasting covenant. And, and as I look at Exodus chapter 24 and verse 3 through 7, you see that they made a covenant agreement with God. See? And, and you see in verse 7, after Moses talked with them and they uh, heard what God required of them, they said that all that the Lord, as quote, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And we will be obedient, of course, that's in verse 7. And so putting salt on the sacrifices always helped them to remember. God said, all your sacrifices, you shall add to salt. And so that was to help them to remember the covenant that they are in a covenant relationship. Now watch. We're going to jump right at it. So they are in a in covenant relationship with God. See? Notice what Jesus says here. And so, watch this. Jesus, when Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, he's saying that we are God's covenant people. Very interesting. You are the salt of the earth, and so we are God's covenant people. So we keep the covenant, and we show the world what it means to be in a covenant relationship with God. We are his representatives. Very interesting. Now, there are a lot of a lot of scriptures I can go to, to, and so it was a struggle for me to narrow it down to simplify it. And so we notice that you are the salt of the earth, of the earth. And so remember, we are God's covenant people, His new covenant people. Now watch, let me show you something. And so we are God's representatives. Go to, stay with me. Go to Hebrews chapter eight and verse six. Hebrews chapter eight and verse six. He's talking to his kingdom, his church. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6. Watch, stay with me. Watch how we move with this. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6. And then we're going to Matthew chapter 5, verse 12 through 16. Then Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 through 20. Watch this, Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6. He says, but now he has obtained a more excellent ministry by as much as he is also the mediator, mediator of a better covenant. See? Which he has enacted on better promises. And, and so we are of a better covenant. And so when we're baptized for the mission of sins, we are, it's like we have entered in a covenant relationship with God. When we repent, we, it's like we have, we have agreed to follow the covenant of God, to follow the law of Christ. We have entered into a covenant relationship. See? And so notice he mentions the uh, mediator of a better covenant, which has been enacted on better promises. And, and so how was that to get out to society? How was that to get out to the people? He said, you are the salt of the earth. Go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, notice this, Matthew chapter 5, let's go back there, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 12. And notice how this ties in, and so we have, we're under a better covenant, better promises, and in 1 Timothy 2, for God desires all to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth, that's the new covenant. Now watch this, and so when he says in Matthew chapter 5, watch this, stay with me, 
Matthew chapter 5 and verse 12. Rejoice and be glad for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way uh, they persecuted the prophets who are before you. Notice this. Verse 11, blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way, they persecuted prophets who were before you. And it's very interesting in Mark chapter nine and verse 49. He says, for everyone will be salted with fire. And so. uh, Being under God's covenant and being his representatives is going to be extremely difficult. Paul said everyone, uh, Christians will suffer uh, persecution. Peter said that Christians will suffer persecutions. People of the kingdom of God will suffer persecution. You see? It's very interesting, Mark 9, 40, 49, for everyone will be salted with fire. That's connected to the covenant. And notice this again. He says, you are, verse 13, you are the salt of the earth. You are my representatives. You teach people what it means to uh, uh, follow the covenant of God. You are the example to society. You are the example to the neighborhood. You are the example to the community. You are an example to the nations. You are my covenant keepers. You are my covenant representatives. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be? How can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. See that? A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Notice this. Watch this. Let your light shine that before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. That's what it's all about. See, we are the covenant representatives, the salt of the earth. And we need to be reminded of that. You notice in, on uh, every Sunday we we take the communion. That's not, it, it's the blood of Christ, but also reminds us that we are in a covenant relationship with God. Every Sunday we do that as a reminder who we are, who we represent, and what we must do. You see, it, it, and, and as the, the blood of Christ is connected to that, we, we see that what happened, what did, what did Christ do so we can be under a new covenant? He sacrificed his blood in Hebrews chapter 9. It brought the new covenant to existence. And, and, and as we remember his blood, the body, the sacrifice, remember the new covenant. That's who we are. We are his representatives. See, now watch this. Now go to Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19 and 20, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. Here's what we do. He said, go, therefore, and make disciples. That means to teach and instruct them. Instruct them what? In the new covenant. And see, he's talking to the kingdom, his church. Go, that's us, therefore. We are the people of the new covenant. We are his representatives and make disciples. See, teach those what it means to instruct them, teach them what it means to be under the covenant of God. To follow the covenant of God, to be covenant people. Of all, see that of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all. That I command you. That's the new covenant. And lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. See that? See? Notice, listen to this. John 17, 15 through 18. He said, I do not. Listen, listen to this. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in truth. That's the new covenant. Your word is truth. That's the new covenant. See that? 
as you send me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. We are his representatives. We are the covenant keepers. See, we serve his purpose. Watch. This is very interesting. As I looked at the old covenant and I noticed that to be effective, the covenant of self that helped them remember the covenant, an everlasting covenant, was not only about the rituals. No. It was also about their behavior. Leviticus 19.34, Deuteronomy 15 and verse 11. And there are several other passage, passages. I like Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. Notice this. He has told you, listen, O man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with your God? I mean, they had rituals, and that those rituals allowed them to draw close to God. But it was to build their relationship with God, and they were to be an example to the world. And, and their behavior was to show that. Uh, and as we get to the new covenant, they seem to they were their focus was so much on the rituals where they forgot the mercy, the long suffering, the love, the kindness, the compassion. And so what happened because they, they were so focused on the rituals and, and they forgot about the other part of the covenant. They did not dress up the old covenant. It, it's, they made it. They didn't dress it up. Their attitude did not dress it up. And so the two go together. Worship God in spirit and in truth. Watch this. Notice what he says to the, the Pharisees in, in Matthew 23 and verse 23. Watch. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you tithe mint and dill and cumin and have been, and listen to this and have neglected the weightier matters of the law. Justice and mercy and faithfulness. The, notice this. Watch this. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. The both go together. God gave them rituals. And he also gave them laws concerning their behavior. Because they want to be an example to the other nation, to the Gentile nations. But they were so focused on the rituals where their behavior became they neglected the behavior that they were supposed to have and it affected their relationship with God. And that's and I don't want us to do that. Sometimes it's like we're so focused on the rituals, which are extremely important. But our behavior is, is our behavior is essential. Also, the two go together, worship God in spirit and in truth. You see. Watch, let me show you something. Watch. Let's go to first Peter chapter. Watch this. First Peter chapter two. Go there with me. First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two and verse nine. First Peter chapter two and verse nine. Watch. <laughs> but, but before I read that, notice I'm going to read Exodus chapter 19. Notice five and six. Just listen. To, listen to this. Now, then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession among all the peoples. He's talking to the Jews. See, that's why he gave them laws concerning how to treat the Gentiles, the foreigners, the aliens. For all the earth is mine. And he says, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Israel. This is what I want you to tell them. He's telling Moses. But notice he says the same thing. And watch what he says in first Peter chapter two and verse nine. But you are here. We go watch this. But you are a chosen race, a, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. See that a people for God's own possession. So why? So that you may proclaim the excellencies. Of him who has called you out of doctors into his marvelous light. You see the new covenant there. You see our responsibility there. 
For you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. And you, you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Watch this. Beloved, I urge you as aliens, as strangers, to abstain from fleshy lust, which war against the soul. Notice, but why? 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 We are God's representative. Notice this. We are God's representative. He said, keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles. Why? Why? So that in the thing in which they slander you as evildoers, they may because of your good deeds. See that you are the salt of the earth. We are his representatives. We teach people about this new covenant and what it means to live under the new covenant and how to behave under the new covenant. He said, as they observe them, glorify God in the day of visitation. In other words, so they can be saved also. Remember, first Peter, first Timothy, chapter two and verse four. God desires all to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. That's a new covenant. We have responsibility. What's this? Turn to first first Timothy, chapter four. First Timothy, chapter four. First Timothy, chapter four. And look at verse 12. I'll give you time to get there. First Timothy, chapter four. And verse 12, let me get out of Thessalonians. I did it again. First Timothy chapter four and verse 12. First Timothy chapter four and verse 12. Watch this. Watch. Let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech. Watch this. See that? Notice the behavior. But rather in speech, conduct, love, faith and purity. Show yourself an example of. Uh, of those who believe that is speech under the old under the new covenant see your behavior under the new covenant your love from the new covenant your faith from the new covenant and purity from the new covenant see show yourself an example of those who believe that's a he's a covenant person you notice that he's of the new covenant notice the behavior and then at the end, of those who believe, be an example of those who follow the teachings of God, the teachings of Christ, who follow the new covenant. He said, listen, verse 11, prescribe and teach these things. See the teaching? The behavior and the teachings go together. The behavior dresses up the teachings. I mean, that's true. If I teach the gospel and, and, and I know the gospel, but my behavior is, shows something different, it's not going to be effective. My behavior is essential in order for the gospel to do what it has a power to do. And I like, like how he says that. Then he's, notice this. He said in the verse 13, until I come, watch this. Give attention to public reading, there you go, of scripture, to exhortation and teaching. Do not neglect the spiritual gift within you, which was bestowed on you through the prophetic utterance with the laying on of the hands by the presbytery. He said, take pains with these things and be absorbed in them so that your progress will be evident to all. Your progress will be evident to all. You're growing. Pay close attention to yourself. Notice that. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere with these things. For as you do this, you will ensure salvation both for yourself and for those who hear you. It's all about salvation. See? You stick to the covenant. You are God's covenant representative. How would I know that your behavior should show who you are and what you are all about? So this is what you do. You understand my behavior must connect to what I do. Here's the truth and here's my behavior. And so as I look at the truth and people say, well, what is what is the love of the new covenant? Well, they should see the love of the new covenant within me. When they say, what is faith under the new covenant? And they, they're going to see the faith under the new covenant through me. What is endurance under the new covenant? Well, as they look over here, they see the they, they see endurance through me. But it's endurance that comes from the new covenant. 
because I'm his covenant representative. You are the salt of the earth. It just doesn't mean season. It's not just savory. It's, 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 it's I am the covenant representative. We are under a, a better covenant. We have a better high priest. And we have a system that if we obey this system, we have eternal life. And we're showing God, I am thankful to be under this covenant. I'm going to show you because I'm going to follow it to the T. And watch. Notice, let's close with this one. You heard that before, right? Colossians chapter four. This is very interesting. Colossians chapter four. Verse, read verse one. Masters, grant to your slave justice and fairness, knowing that you have a master in heaven. Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving, praying at the same time for us as well, that God will open up to us a door for the word. See that? That's the new covenant. So that we may speak forth the mystery of Christ as of the new covenant. For which I have also been imprisoned. He's imprisoned because of the new covenant. He is a covenant keeper. He is a covenant. He is a covenant representative. He's doing what God requires him to do. And because of that, he experienced the salt of fire. Remember that? Salt of fire. It's not easy. Then he says, verse five, uh, conduct yourselves with wisdom toward outsiders, making the most of the opportunity. There's your behavior. Let your speech always notice this. Let your speech always. Here was it. Listen, let your speech always be with grace as though seasoned with salt. See that so that you will know how you should respond to each person. Notice that. Let your speech always, not sometimes, be with grace as though seasoned with salt. Our speech is of the covenant. These are reminders. It's the covenant of salt. See, let your speech always be uh, with grace as though seasoned with salt. And so how do I season? How do I, how is my speech effective? How is my speech productive without the new covenant? See, that's who we are. So that you will know how to, it goes back to another person. So that you will know how you should respond to each person. For every idle word that man shall speak, he shall give an account of the day of judgment. For by your words you shall be justified, by your words you shall be condemned. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 and 37. See, our words, our speech is of the new covenant. And there's requirements. There's a teaching. We don't gossip. We don't involve ourselves in slander. We are encouraging. We teach sound doctrine with the mouth. See, we elevate with the mouth. We encourage with the mouth. See, that's of the old covenant, the new covenant. See, we are his covenant, new covenant representatives. That's why I said, you are the salt of the earth. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works. Why? And glorify your father who is in heaven so that they may also obey the new covenant just like you have. Though he was son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been made perfect, 
He became the author of salvation to all that obey him. That's under the new covenant. We have a great responsibility and we need not forget that. We can help you this morning. Please come out and stand and sing the song for the invitation. <laughs>